In a report in 2018, authored by the Institute for the Future, which drew on a panel of 20 top tech, business and academic experts from around the world, it was concluded that 85% of the jobs that will exist in 2030 do not exist today. In other words, by the time our current year six students leave education, the working world will be almost entirely unrecognizable from what we know today. With 14.8 billion internet connected devices in use right now, and more services moving online all the time, it's clear that technology will continue to play an important part in the working world, but will also play a crucial part of our personal lives as well. In addition, we're living through the beginning of the fourth industrial revolution, with the development of AI putting a huge range of jobs at risk of extinction in their current form. So, how do we prepare our students, our children, for this brave new digital world? Well, here at King Alfred, I've been redesigning our curriculum to meet exactly these challenges. I don't want our students to think of technology as a subject, but as a tool set that can be applied to every project that they're working on. In addition to their literacy in English and maths, we want them to have a digital literacy, the ability to analyze a problem, select the appropriate tool for the task, and then apply it efficiently, safely, and ethically. Our tagline for this approach is creators, not consumers guiding our young learners away from thinking about digital tools as tools of consumption and towards them being tools of creation. This approach started back in 2011 at Kennedy School in Hong Kong. I'd recently moved from London, where I'd been a year six teacher and ICT coordinator at a state school with an annual budget of about 500 pounds. <laughs> when I arrived at Kennedy, I was told the PTA were giving me the equivalent of £25,000, and I was directed to spend all of it improving the school's tech resources. As you can imagine, this was a challenge that I met with great enthusiasm. And I quickly set to work building a library of iPads, MacBooks, essentially everything that was available at the time. It was an unparalleled collection, and it filled an entire section of the resources room at the school. And there, for almost a year, it sat untouched by nearly everyone in the school except me. Why? Well, there is a universal truth that can be applied to all primary school teachers everywhere. We are enthusiasm rich and time poor. It wasn't that my colleagues didn't want to use the new resources, it's that they didn't know how, and furthermore, most of them did not have the time to work it out for themselves. The solution to this crisis was the changing of my role. I stepped out of class, and since then, I've been developing an approach to digital education, which is very different from the discrete subject model that you might be familiar with. Instead, I work alongside teachers to plan opportunities where technology can significantly enhance the learning that's already happening in the classroom, or ideally, where it can create transformative new experiences that simply are not possible without the use of technology. I plan and resource the lessons, and then either model them or team teach them, with the co coaching the teaching staff in how to use that resource effectively in the classroom. I then leave my colleagues with all the skills and knowledge that they need to use those resources, again, themselves in the future. My current job title is a digital literacy coordinator, which speaks to our aim of ensuring that all children and staff are able to use a range of digital tools fluently across the curriculum. For example, just last term in year three, the children were investigating how to keep healthy and we decided it would be interesting to count how many steps that we took over the course of a day. So the students designed, coded, and built their very own step counters. We used a simple piece of hardware called a microcontroller and then combined the children's knowledge of coding, electrical engineering, and textiles to create their own wearable devices. Not only did the children find out about how to stay healthy, 
but I also learned that you don't necessarily have to buy devices. It's possible to create your own and then adapt them to meet your needs. In another unit on natural phenomena, we built earthquake simulators out of Lego with a motor attached to a tectonic plate which moved with gradually increasing force. This allowed the children to investigate for themselves which building designs and materials would best survive an earthquake. An opportunity to be creative in an exciting and engaging way which furthered the learning that was happening inside the classroom. Over the last year, we've created programmable cardboard robots. We've made stop frame animations with the seven-year-olds. We've rescued teddy bears from a simulated avalanche in the playground using student-made radio receivers and transmitters. We've released a 20-minute news program all about the school, which was entirely planned, shot, edited, and organized by a team of reporters aged eight to 11. We've published our own magazines. We've been cryptographers at Bletchley Park. We've explored simulations of ancient Roman towns. We've even used our knowledge of town planning to build our own thriving virtual eco-cities. This shift from a discrete subject model to an embedded digital literacy in every school I've worked at, from Hong Kong to Singapore and now home again to London, has seen a flourishing of children embracing the new tools that are available. From moisture sensing watering systems to student movies about anti-bullying campaigns to autonomous rescue robots, often all it needs is the smallest introduction to the tools and the children's imaginations will take care of the rest. If we, as educators, or indeed as parents, can provide that introduction, then our children won't meet the working and personal worlds of tomorrow as passive consumers, but will be able to shape it for themselves as creators. <laughs>